Hey, welcome back, everybody. Of course, my name is Dr. Keith McNally, and this is Coach's Corner. I'm here with somebody very special. Her name is Jessica, Jessica Kopecki. And I know I can say that she's special because she's I've hired her to do work. She's actually drawn some illustrations for me, but the most spectacular thing is behind her. She's got this amazing unicorn. So I know we can see it. It's absolutely beautiful, and it belongs to one of your book, right? It's part of your a book that you've done. But so there's so much to talk about. Let's get into the conversation. Jessica, who are you and what do you do? Uh, well, I'm a graphic designer slash illustrator slash architectural photographer slash mural artist. And then my passion project is author illustrating my book. That's a lot to be doing. So what do you do most often? I, I love the book. Can we start? Can we start with your book first? Oh, I'd Let's love to. Your... Yeah. So, um. Here's my book. Um, you've got pictures of it behind me, but um, so, this so what is, is my, this? yeah, this is a lower middle grade children's chapter book. Um, it is full color throughout the inside of it. Um, so like, this is kind of like something that would connect the dots for a kid that's stepping, they're going from the step into reading style books that aren't truly chapter books, but have more text and still like image heavy somewhere between that and your typical chapter book that has black and white illustrations and not very many illustrations. So can I ask, what was the motivation? What was the passion behind making such a gift? Well, I'd actually started off being an idea for a stuffed animal pattern. Oh, um, wow. So like as a graphic designer, I have the capacity to you know, like use Illustrator, make um like cut files like vector cut files and so I thought that it would be kind of neat to combine crafting and graphics by creating um, patterns to download on Etsy as like a passive income stream cool. um, and I had actually created like several different like designs that you can like download on Etsy um, but out of all of these different designs that I created uh, the one that I think when I was making the prototype, because you always must prototype uh -huh. the one that really I fell in love oh, with. Oh, show that one again. What is that's oh, a camper yeah. under the stars? Yeah. Oh, that looks really cool. Thank you. Um, yeah, I out of all of the um, out of all the um, here I'll stop distracting myself by <laughs> this is like the top of a pink lemonade glass. Okay. Um, Great. But anyways, out of all the prototypes that I made, I start, I fell in love with the um, seahorse of corn while I was making it. Um, it was actually, I was trying to solve the issue of like how to make a really easy hand, handmade needle crafted design that didn't have 52 legs coming out of it because I hadn't mastered the 3D realm yet. Okay. But I also wanted all the magic of like rainbow, like, mermaid hair without having its head flop back okay. um so this solved all those design issues but then i fell in love with it and everybody i showed it to flipped out over it so <laughs> i decided that the stuffed animal actually wasn't the thing and that the real thing was developing this character okay which then turned into a story which then became sort of a freudian concoction of everything that i was going through at that moment in time so and, so, and oh, as yes, some teasers what what's the story about so my character is like beautiful flashy colors um but um she's kind of like like there's like a pink seahorse corn and there's a yellow seahorse corn and there's all these different color seahorse corns but she's the only like all color seahorse corn um which makes her a little bit more of a target for predators mm -hmm. um and so <laughs> the the story sort of centers around how the way that she looks makes her somewhat of an outcast because nobody really wants to be near her and become near the target you know mm. uh, so it it addresses some issues of like fear and bravery and stuff like that but i have a sequel coming out very soon so it's good there's if if i had everything my way there would be seven stories in the series but we'll just take it one book at a time one book at a time is good. Um, I've got ideas for a series of books myself, 
and I've sent you one of them, but we're not going to get into that right now. So you wrote a book, you're looking at another one, you've drawn illustrations for my book and for some other projects I've had. Mm -hmm. How did you get started? Because I love the nature of which you create characters. And I just have to give you some, some really basic ideas. And then your, your magic just happens. So how does, how does your magic happen? Oh, thank you. Um, you know, how sometimes, um, you just don't know. <laughs> like, <laughs> wasn't like, the answer. I know, I know. But like, um, uh, I think, I think for some people, there's a combination of it comes naturally and it came with practice. So like, um, for as far back as I can remember, I was drawing pictures and like literally being a physical cartoon, like in my interactions with people, mm -hmm. um, uh, and like I don't know if you've ever seen like you know how like in cartoons like the cartoon character will be drawing they'll have their like tongue sticking out while they're doing it uh -huh. uh, that's like that's like a legit artist thing is that like we'll be making the thing and making the face of the thing while we're doing the thing <laughs> so we've we've already made all the faces and all that stuff so yeah it's it's just and like as a kid that was kind of what I did to stay busy and I liked doing it and I kind of started liking doing it. And then you know how it is when you like have a natural talent in something because it feels good. You just keep doing it. Do, do more of it. Yeah. Yeah. And, which is different than when you don't have that natural talent and you really have to work at it, which is something I have to work at for other things. So. But, and so like, again, I think there's, there's magic in what you do because for me, it's, it really adds value to the things that I'm trying to produce. Um, so who, without having name names or, or please if you can who <laughs> have you drawn for like you know where 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 can we see your work at well probably the most the most public things that i can say okay if you visit my website jessica com. okay uh, and it'll be in the description mm -hmm. okay yeah um i have um a a page on my website that shows like some illustration and character design. But then I also have a page that shows my mural art and my mural art. It can, can be similar in style to my illustration style too. So what's the biggest thing you've ever done? Like physically in, big? In scale. Yeah. In like scale? Probably a mural I did in Belleville, Illinois, which is across the river from uh, St. Louis. Um, so that was a traveling job for, for me because I'm in central Wisconsin. And that was like 18 feet tall. Uh, I think it was like 43 feet wide. Ooh, no, I did oh. something bigger in scale. It was eight feet tall and 120 feet wide. Um, yeah, it was- wow. it, it was a sound barrier. Um, it's, it looks like a fence. It's basically a, like a composite fence, but it's also, it's like a sound barrier. Yeah. But, okay. What's um, on that? Uh, the history of Cronenwetter. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Whoa. What? The whole history. So <laughs> and so, how? How? What do you mean the history of? Like you wrote letters? Like you wrote a narrative? Like this guy that like it was 80 years old at the time basically told me everything okay. and like like this happened here this happened there I kind of want to make it four seasons um you know and and like I was I had overwhelmed the first few times that he was talking to me about it because I was like how am I going to fit this all in there but if you if you look on the website and you check out the quick um video because I don't have pictures it's so linear that I just I just put like a news a news um tv uh, a preview of it mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> it's like What's every the... oh go ahead go no go ahead go ahead finish every every farm implement like <laughs> like that made that community kind of like whoosh, you know and it's like it was like i've never seen my husband smile when i showed him like a mural like okay he, He's just like, good job, you know, but this one, he was like smiling because it was like, yes, every bit of like technology that assisted the growth of that community was being included in that mural. So I think it really spoke to his engineer brain and probably other people's engineer brains too. Other than this big one that's at, you know, at large scale, 
what is the project you're most proud of other than your book? You know, it's, it's hard to say because they all fulfill different parts of my brain. Like um, I'm not always at liberty to say what I do graphically and in like the photography realm, but it makes me feel proud because it's more serious, you know? <laughs> and like when I, when I can do serious projects, you know, it like makes me feel like I'm part of a team, okay. which is, different than when I'm a lone wolf artist. Or do like you I do can... oh, go ahead. no no you you go. What what so are you mostly a lone wolf artist or do you typically work or is it split? I feel like it's split. I mean like as a freelancer you are technically a lone wolf, but when I have teams that I work with, the collaborative element gets me excited. Oh good. So yeah. is there anything special you, you you before the call you mentioned that you're doing a fundraiser. Yes. What's that all about? Uh, okay, so um the so that is okay. I thought that I still agree with this. I thought that the best way to advertise my first book was to create the second book. And so mm -hmm. I was really pounding the second book out and then like a year later um one of the local bookstores ran out of my book and I said, "Do you want me to um, get more books. There's only 10 books. And they were like, no, we're good. And I was like, Ooh. That didn't sound good. <laughs> <laughs> like I didn't do anything to advertise. So like, I was oh. feeling kind of like they're, they're the experts. They're the ones that have been in business for over a hundred years. So like, I need to like up my game a little bit. So I tried to think of something that would, um, that would like be marketing for me. And um, I based it off of the feedback that um, a lot of parents were like, hey, my reluctant reader is actually reading this book. So, um, yeah. Cool. So, like, so summer was coming. I went, how about I make a reading incentive program because the summer slide comes and everybody loses their skills. And it sort of works out because it's kind of like a tropical looking theme anyways. Um, with all the color. So I yeah. yeah, with yeah. the color and the fact that it's underwater and it looks like something in like the Caribbean or something. And um like I turned it I called it my character's name is Sandy. So I called it Sandy's Summer Splash into Reading. Um and then as I developed the idea, um I kind of got the idea idea in my head from like some random people that I was talking to about it, like that fundraising is something you can do off of these things. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, yes, because then I can get into newspapers and TV and it's like free advertising. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so like, I don't want to, yeah, like, so it's, it, it is a fundraiser and um, I don't want to come across like I'm the type of person who did that out of the goodness of my heart, but it did evolve into that. And I'm quite happy that it did. Um, I handpicked some like local literacy initiatives so that all everything about it ties back into like incentivizing reading and literacy. Um, and so it's like a very local idea. And hopefully someday if I get big and famous, I can make it into like a bigger thing than just my local area. But for now, that's what I know. Cool. Hello. So and it, and it helps because um, I feel like the networking that has come from working on this is helping me to stay relevant in other areas of my business. Well, so. I contacted you because I needed some illustrations done for, like I said, a couple of projects and you're working uh, with me on the second version of Walking the Path. Um, when somebody comes to you, why would somebody come to you and how would they go about getting in touch with you in order to you know, talk about things that they may need for their projects? Well, um, there is, uh, if you go like back to that same website, which you mentioned would be in the description, um, mm -hmm. jessicacopecki.com, there is like, a, I believe it's on the about page, but there's multiple pages on there where there's like, you can fill out like the online form. I get it through my email. Um, like if you just say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm looking for a certain type of project. Um, you know, these are kind of my goals. And then I can contact you back and say, Hey, I can do this or I can't do this. And I always try to refer people if I'm not the right woman for the job. Okay. Sounds good. With that being said, 
and the limited time we have left, show us something other than your stuffed animal. Show us something yeah. that you're really, really proud of. Hmm. Show us, can you do a close up of what's behind you? Can you bring it forward? Oh. Yeah. Um, this blanket? Yeah. Oh, sure. Well, like with, with my, it's covering up my mess, but. That's okay. We all got yeah. mess, but this is beautiful. Yeah. So because I'm a graphic designer, I know how to do print on demand drop shipping. So. Oh, okay. That's, that's another thing that I can do. So like, this is another thing on my Etsy shop. Um, and then, um, I know it's not the, um, I know it's not the seahorse accord. It's still a stuffed animal, but like, here's some other like little designs too. I love it. I love it. That's so very perfect. crafty. Well, so. Jessica, I love it. I, I love the work that you do. I do think it's magical. I think it's beautiful. And I think when somebody comes to work, uh, brings you a project, you really get in tune in touch with their thinking. At least this has been my experience with with my projects. And so you deliver stuff on time, on target, and just quality stuff. And so if you're looking for any type of drawing or illustration or if you just want magic happen in your own project, yeah. I'm going to sell you. Jessica, contact Jessica. Thank you. Thank you so much. This has been another edition of Coach's Corner, and we'll see you next time. Take care.